Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Sepian Kaslam, Head of ETF and Indexing Investment and Sales Specialist with HSBC, to discuss an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ Global Semiconductor Index offered by HSBC. Sepian, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Hi, thank you very much for having me. You got it. And let's start with discussing trends in the semi space and why you think it's attractive for investors now. Sure, absolutely. Um, I'll start by saying there are a number of underlying subtrends within the semiconductor space. Um, but quite simply, from a tech standpoint, the world is changing very fast. So there are new types of complex technologies, both hardware and software, which are coming online. These require increasing computing power, and they're changing the way we live and the way we do business. So I think it's fair to say um, that we're living through an era of technological disruption. And you can really see that in terms of the growth of the chip market, which grew around 30% in 2021. Uh, it saw similar order of magnitude growth uh, in previous years as well. But there's really a few key sectors that, that have been the primary users of semiconductors more recently. Um, so, for example, the communication space, smartphones, for example, uh, and in increasingly technologies like VR. Uh, heavy uses of semiconductors. Uh, computing is another is another space. So, so artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, require much more intensive computing power. Um, so the semiconductor market has had to evolve as a result of that. Um, also within industrial space, we're seeing more and more automation taking place. Uh, again, semiconductors are required there as these, um, these new uh, robotic features come online. And finally, within the automotive space, with electric cars, um, appearing on the scene and soon uh, autonomous vehicles. Um, uh, there's more and more uh, demand for semiconductors with, within that space too. Um, but if we look at the semiconductor market through the geographic lens, we see that, that semis are needed worldwide. And though the US leads in terms of sales at around uh, 50%, with Asia at around 40% and Europe uh, 10%, if we look at things from a manufacturing point of view, uh, it's a bit of a different picture. So Asia dominates as it has around 80% uh, of the, the, the market share there. Um, and then you have to account for the fact that, that there are uh, specializations in, in different regions. The US leads in terms of logic and analog semis, Korea leads in terms of memory, um, Europe leads uh, in terms of discrete chips. So to answer the question directly, from an investor's point of view, semis underpin all types of technology, both old, old world and new world, uh, and make, um, the rapid developments in technology that we've witnessed in in the re in recent years possible. So in this respect, we see the secular bull market in the sem in semiconductors continuing. And Sefian, tell us about the HSBC semi ETF and the methodology behind it. Sure. Um, so on the basis of of what I've just mentioned, the HSBC Global Semiconductor ETF has been deliberately designed to give investors access uh, to companies that are instrumental in enabling new technologies to come online. So the index itself uh, goes beyond the traditional US semiconductor uh, company space and includes companies from other regions uh, around the world, notably Asia and Europe. So companies that are developing and using semiconductors in new world and old world technologies as mentioned. Um, I guess the key point here is that for the semiconductor industry and for that matter for technology more generally, uh, the, the scope of this goes uh, reaches well beyond the U.S. and it, this should really be thought of as, as a global, uh, the global and not just the regional level. And why track to the Nasdaq Global Semiconductor Index? Well, the performance of semiconductor stocks has been tremendous over the past few years, uh, really accelerating after the COVID pandemic, um, primarily because demand for work from home technologies uh, such as hardware, cloud, wireless communication cybersecurity, et cetera, drove semiconductor sales through the roof. Um, that was also exacerbated by um, the supply chain bottlenecks that we witnessed last year. Uh, and whilst we believe it could be difficult to, um, or you know, it could be quite hard to match this pace of demand uh, going forward, we expect the rapid development, the continued rapid development of new technologies, new modes of operating, et cetera, to drive this secular trend uh, forward for a number of years to come. And in fact, if you look at the numbers, the Global Semiconductor Index returned around 40% last year. Um, it's up around 200% from the pandemic lows with it outperforming broader tech stocks, uh, both during and after the COVID sell-off. 
And our belief is that despite the challenging environment for technology stocks um, in a rate rising environment as the Fed hikes interest rates and other central banks follow, um, semiconductor stocks will have the potential to remain relatively immune, especially if the supply chain bottlenecks I mentioned previously persist. And finally, is this ETF appropriate for all types of investors? In other words, how can investors incorporate it into their portfolios? In short, yes, we believe that investors that have access to the use its ETF market and that are looking to gain direct exposure uh, to the global semiconductor market, or even indirect diversified tech exposure via the semiconductor market, um, that this ETF is appropriate for them. I guess what I'm saying is that if they're looking to invest uh, in the technological revolution more broadly across tech themes without homing in on any particular technology theme, this is an appropriate choice. And it should act as, as a bit of a diversifier within their portfolios. Uh, in, in that respect. In fact, I'll go on to say uh, that tech thematic ETFs more generally offer new ways to diversify portfolios as they um, cut across traditional sector and geographic boundaries, and actually even in some cases, cases asset class boundaries in different ways to standard market cap indices. So investors and asset allocators should look at their diversification properties as well as their ability to capture targeted uh, exposure to specific themes. All right, Stefan, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.